Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker was born on November 9, 1731 in Ellicott Mills, Maryland. His parents were Robert and Mary Banneker. His father was from Guinea and his mother was the daughter of Molly Welsh, an English indentured servant. Banneker's parents were free so he didn't experience slavery. This would help set the course for his brilliant future. He was taught how to read by his grandmother Molly as well as attended a Quaker school early in his learning. Banneker no longer attended school once he began working on his family's farm. With the exception of what he learned from his grandmother and the Quaker school, Banneker was self-educated. He was known as an avid reader, learning as much as he could, as often as he could. He also began mastering mathematics and developing problem-solving skills. By the time Banneker was 22, he built a string wall clock, which he modeled after a pocket watch. The most brilliant thing about the wall clock is he had never seen one before he created his. He used wood and his pocket knife to create the clock. It is stated that the clock still worked even after Banneker's death. He even taught himself astronomy and it would pay off for him later in his life. In 1771, the Ellicott family moved near the Banneker family farm and their union with Banneker would help change America. Andrew Ellicott was appointed by George Washington to survey selected pieces of land on which to build the nation's new capital. Ellicott needed the help of someone with extensive knowledge in astronomy and surveying. Banneker was recommended by George Ellicott and later hired. In 1791, both Andrew Ellicott and Benjamin Banneker traveled to what is now known as Washington, D.C. and began working on the surveying project. They worked diligently to map out the boundaries that would make up the land for the nation's capital. Working with the Ellicotts, Banneker was able to gather a significant amount of information on astronomy, which he used to complete the ephemeris he was creating. The ephemeris was a series of calculated solar and lunar eclipse predictions, which helped Banneker complete his almanac. In 1792, Banneker sent a handwritten letter to Thomas Jefferson criticizing him about his slave-owning practices and inhumane views towards blacks. Jefferson acknowledged the letter and responded to the letter. Both Banneker and Jefferson's letters were later published. Banneker also gained acclaim when he published his almanac in 1792. His almanacs were printed and sold as a series for six years in six cities and four states. Banneker received support for his almanacs by the Ellicotts as well as the Society for the Promotion of the Abolition of Slavery of Maryland and of Pennsylvania. The first two series gained some commercial success and praise from the William Wilberforce and the House of Commons of Great Britain. On October 9, 1806, Banneker died at the age of 76 but left a legacy to be remembered. He revolutionized the clock, used astronomy to create Washington, D.C., mastered mathematics and created his almanacs that still fascinate the world. Banneker accomplished all of these feats even though he would be considered limited in his education. He learned that true education comes from a strong will, passion, and persistence. Mr. Benjamin Banneker, we proudly stand on your shoulders. On the Shoulders of Giants is brought to you by Live Skill, Live for Fear. For more information, visit www.liveskill.com. Thank you.